I was interviewed by NASA at LSU where I was getting ready to graduate. Marshall offered a job and a, a friend of mine who was actually the best man at my wedding used to co-op here so he was very high on it. So uh, I accepted and they, first thing I know I, on the 25th of uh, June 1962 I arrived. Well, the main thing for Apollo, they were, it was the early days of the Saturn V, but the uh, Saturn I and 1Bs were active. One of the first jobs I had was with the, in the test laboratory. Was the, um, we were caretaking the uh, S1B that we had in the dynamic test stand. And we'd do modal testing or whatever. And uh, our job was to 24 hours a day to monitor it and make sure it, if it got cold, nothing froze. So next activity I got involved in was testing the uh, turbo pump that was on the H1 engine for the uh, Saturn 1B. And uh, following that, uh, our section was chosen to test the F1 engine, which goes on the first stage of the S1C. So spent a lot of time getting test stands ready. We modified one of the old Saturn stands to, to start testing early, and plus built a new stand for later on. So I think our first test was in 1963. The first attempt at the F1 was basically to scale up components from the uh, H1. And the first injector, that goes in the main chamber for the F1, turned out to be very unstable. You'd run a test and be running along thinking you were doing fine and all of a sudden it would, combustion instability would set in and he'd tear the engine apart. So they even, they created a team to go out to California and uh, I think Jerry Thompson headed it up to, uh, look at different concepts for getting the stability problems settled. And they finally did, and after they got the, the, our first engine was very stable and we never never had any stability problem. I, we worked on the S1C when we put it in the test stand and tested the test vehicle as well as the first couple of flight stages. and. During that, the latter stages of that period, the, um, we took the old S1CT, the test vehicle, to Stennis to activate the B facility at Stennis. So I went to Stennis for that activation and then started working the S2 stage, which was being acceptance tested at Stennis. And I uh, stayed there for, it was like seven or eight months I was at Stennis. Of course, it was Mississippi Test Facility back then. The vehicle I was on was the second stage of Apollo 6, which was uh, the second flight vehicle. And uh, so I was there for four or five months while we were prepping the stage and, and getting it ready to launch. And that happened to be the stage that also had uh, some problems. Uh, I was in... Uh, the central instrumentation facility, it was called, is where all the stripper charts and the recorders were. So I didn't get to see a thing. My my wife watched the launch from the parking lot of Titusville Bank and had a much better view than I did. I remember looking at the uh, strip charts that showed the chamber pressures while the uh, S2 was firing, and all of a sudden they, engine two and then engine three quit which was you know, kind of shocking I and mean, it wasn't not expected. That stage, that flight also experienced POGO. Now, POGO was a problem we were familiar with. It occurred in a Titan. It's real subtle. You can make, some, there weren't that many changes between the, the first Saturn V launch and the second one, but it was enough to, to change some dynamic characteristics and the pogo came in and 
and really rattle that stage with a low frequency oscillation. After it splashed down and we finally completed the mission, the, um, we went back to hospital and started working what were those problems. And the big problem we, I was involved with was the uh, taking care of the pogo problem. Our test stand that we were using had a lot of vehicle hardware in it, it from the bottom of the propellant tanks all the way down to the engine interface were all vehicle hardware. So we were able to, to, to simulate all the conditions that it would see. And the, we were fortunate that the pre-valve we have, which is a, a valve just in front of the engine that uh, you use in emergencies whenever you terminate the propellant flow, ha had a lot of cavity space in it, which worked out to be perfect to be an accumulator. So they worked up a design for an accumulator and we put it in the F1 stand to test it and we ran a lot of tests on it, pulsed the engine with, and verified that uh, it, it worked. It dampened the uh, oscillation significantly. The rest of the time with the Saturn V, it was almost, well, I wouldn't say boring because when you fire an engine that big and it's rattling the building you're standing in, it's not boring. But uh, we didn't have any real significant problems. One memory of that that really stands out for me was uh, the news people were all over the world. And they were in Paris. And they were interviewing uh, some citizens in Paris. And one guy made the statement, it must be proud to be an American right now. Uh, I'll always remember that, that statement. The first thing we had a mission, the President Kennedy made the statement that we were going to send men to the moon and bring them back safely. So that was, that's the thing that programs that I followed that really suffered from a lack of a mission. We just continued the testing and, and did what we could to make sure every flight was successful. I worked f for some very good people. Uh, Dan Driscoll was our division chief, and Carl Heimberg was the laboratory chief. We started transitioning and working the follow-on, which was going to be the shuttle. We thought the way to get costs down was to reuse something. I started working space shuttle main engine in, in those early days. We did trade studies, and we even had versions that would modify the Saturn V first stage to make it a flyback booster. We couldn't do what SpaceX did because it was very large. And uh, I think we were a bit further down range when it burned out, so it wasn't as easy to to fly it, fire it up and fly it back to the launch site. Being in the blockhouse when we were testing the S1C, I mean, that was a big, loud booster. During one test, I was on the periscope to watch for something going wrong. And we had, we used water to cool the, the exhaust a little bit to protect the vehicle and the facility. And one of them had a flange that was about in the middle of the engine and during the test it sprung a leak. And I, I, we were sitting there with a the cut button but very quickly I realized what it was and, and uh, we continued to test successfully. And we had a lot of criticism because we were spending so much money and they, a lot of people thought it could be better spent in other areas. You know, it was just something you put up with. It, uh, we couldn't do anything about it. We just make sure that we w didn't provide them with any ammunition to sh shut the program down. Social issues can be very alarming. You couldn't watch television 
without seeing something going on where somebody did something they shouldn't have. And, and we had protests and marches, and, but uh, we were still concentrating on getting a man to the moon and make sure he came back safely. So it made a difference. The, the German crew that was here, they, they were amazing. They, they'd argue like gangbusters over a subject or whatever, but they had one characteristic I wish we all had is once a decision was made, they all lined up and marched together. I recall one time I was in a review that Dr. Von Braun was in, and it was uh, a, an engine review, and they put a schematic, I think it was a J2, up on the screen, and he studied it for a while, and all of a sudden he stopped the presenter and pointed out a valve on the engine that was backwards in the schematic. It was a check valve, and he said, isn't that check valve went the wrong way? And Yeah, it was a, an artist made a mistake and put the, the checking in the wrong direction, but he was just, he, picked it out. Uh, after the first full duration S1C fire, and he invited a bunch of us to his house. And uh, we sat around and just talked, and he wouldn't know about all the pogo stuff that uh, we did, and verified that the, the method of recirculating propellants to keep geysers from occurring. Geysers are strange uh, currents. If you have a tall column of of uh, cryogenic, particularly locks, and, and that you have a heat source at the bottom like an engine, it'll, if you don't keep it cold enough, it'll ultimately saturate and then turn into a gas. And then if you get enough gas, it goes up the line, and when it goes up the line, it empties everything above it until it gets to the bottom of the tank and then it fills back up. And you've got this 50-something foot column of oxygen moving as fast as one G. It can damage stuff. The S1C had a problem with that during one of the acceptance tests. Somebody made an error and didn't replace the seal and it had a fuel leak and it caught on fire. And while the test crew was trying to figure out what to do, they neglected to reestablish the recirculation. So they got a geyser that ruptured one of the LOX lines and it dumped LOX on a kerosene fire. You learn from your mistakes. Well, everybody likes to say you guys had plenty of money because you could do what you wanted to do. And to a certain degree, that was true. There were some budget constraints, but we still had the money to do what we felt was necessary to do. The center was very young. We had a lot of young engineers like myself at that time. And uh, you know, we didn't know that we couldn't do things. You know, somebody come up with an idea, well, we'd try it and see what would happen and away we go. That was very beneficial. I, I was working on a system to put people on the moon. You know, people, not too many people have done that before in their life, so. Uh, it was exciting times. The, the, everybody was kind of excited about the fact that we were going to send you know, a crew to the moon and bring them back. It made you kind of look at things a little more critical to be sure that you didn't have any problems. And most of the flights were pretty much, except for the, the one I was at the Cape for, were pretty successful. They, uh, they had no major problems. So. That paid off, but being part of an effort to uh, send a man to the moon just motivated everybody. That was, that was great.